Uh, those who I have up here with me today, I've got Captain Matt Sly with the Idaho State Police, and I've got uh, Supervising Agent Doug Hart with the Federal Bureau of Investigation. And then I also have joining us today the mother of Michael Joseph Vaughn, Brandy Neal. Thanks for being here with us today. We appreciate you. Um, I want to start out by thanking our friends from the media for being here and giving us another opportunity to get this, to get Michael back in the headlines and at the forefront. Michael's case has impacted everyone who has heard about it, but likely not as much as it, as it has uh, impacted Brandy, uh, Tyler, Michael's family, and the law enforcement officers working day in and day out to find him. I want to express my sincere thanks to you all for being here and covering the updates that we have for you today. The search for Michael will not stop until he's found, and the search remains very active. As I've said to the public, the effort may look a little bit different from time to time, but those of us in law enforcement leading the search and the investigation, Michael's on the top of our mind, he's our top priority, and finding him is an intense daily part of our lives. Michael Joseph Vaughn was last seen near his residence on Southwest 9th Street at approximately 6.30 p.m. Tuesday, July 27, 2021. The first missing and endangered child alert went out at 8.20 p.m. with four different alerts to email, phone calls, text messages being issued to the area residents until 11.20 p.m. that night. Michael's image and information went out to law enforcement nationwide and a database called the National Center for um, crime, or the National Crime Information Center, and Michael has also been entered in the State of Idaho Missing Person Clearinghouse. From the time of notification, an exhaustive search effort and criminal investigation began simultaneously. So our ground searches are based on the highest probability that Michael may have wandered off, potentially gotten hurt, stuck in an irrigation ditch, a swimming pool, uh, an outbuilding, an old appliance, a junk vehicle, anywhere a 50-pound curious boy uh, could hide himself. We wanted to make sure that all the ground within a one to two mile radius from Southwest 9th Street, where, where Michael lives, has been searched by residential homeowners, professional searchers, law enforcement, and specifically trained canines. And not just one of these groups, but by all of these groups. As such, we've been conducting these searches continuously, even up to this week. On Monday of this week, the Idaho Mountain Search and Rescue with specialty canines and the Fruitland Police Department conducted searches in the front and backyards of nearly all the homes on Southwest 9th Street, as well as another large acreage off of Northwest 1st Street in between Nevada and, and, and Highway 95. On Tuesday, the Idaho Mountain Search and Rescue with their specialty canines, with the Fruitland Police Department, the Idaho State Police, who had a drone in the air, and the FBI, we methodically searched the farm ground to the southeast and southwest of Southwest 9th Street. And combined, we, we, we searched close to 1,000 acres this week. Why would we continue to search areas that have been searched multiple times before? Well, because we haven't found Michael yet, and conditions change. So further, you can imagine going home every night as a law enforcement officer wondering, you know, did we miss something during that search? Michael, Brandy, and Tyler and the community continues to count on us to keep up the search, and that is why we continue to search. And I've said from the beginning that as long as those resources are available, we will continue to ask for them. Remember that a criminal investigation, that happened at the same time of notification as the time that Michael went missing. And due to the fact that we've conducted multiple searches using every tool available to us with no success, it increases the possibility that Michael was abducted. From the beginning until, I guess, until we find Michael, we're considering every possibility and following up on every lead developed, every tip that comes in, and the total number of tips that we've received to date is over 557. And the majority of those tips have been cleared by investigation. The others are currently being worked on. Word of our search has gone worldwide. And tips on where he might be have come in from literally around the globe. Thanks to resources available to us again, every tip, regardless of how many miles away, is going to be followed up on. We're committed, and we work together to support each other. Every day we come to work, we work through the exhaustion, 
Um, it, for investigators, there's always highs and lows. Each day we go through these highs and lows. And I can't tell, but what I can tell you is, I can tell you with certainty that the Fruitland Police Department and our law enforcement partners are using every resource available and will continue to look into every possibility until we know exactly what happened. We're steadfast in our commitment to bringing Michael home safely. I want to thank each and every search member, the search teams that have been out here, and each and every investigator for their time and expertise and the commitment they've put into helping us bring Michael home. We also want to emphasize Michael's family who continues to be fully cooperative, working closely with us on, on almost a daily basis. We ask the community to continue to respect their privacy. As for the reward for Michael, um, the reward for Michael's safe return remains in effect, uh, and it's increased. The amount uh, is increased to $50,100, and that's for anyone having information to the, uh, leading to the safe return of Michael, and that will be available until March 31st, 2022.